All right, um, let's get to today's business. Today I will show you a little bit how Sidespin works. It should help you out in returning serves, producing your own Sidespin, blocking, anything you can think of because by Sidespin and table tennis is in everything. I have to say though, in real life, when somebody gives you a good Sidespin serve, it has much more impact on your bat. So even if it feels very strong in here with like the fast spinny serves, uh, in real life, it's the slow side spin serves that will probably uh, do you more damage if you're not used to them. All right, let's start with a simple explanation of how side spin works and how you can try to understand it without doing any difficult exercises. It has to do with how you generate spin as well. New players generally, they're afraid or they don't trust in the fact that you can pull up the ball by pure brushing. And you can see that when I ask them to do this, they usually do this right but as you as you can see when i do this the ball moves in the direction of where i'm brushing right so if you want the ball to go straight up you need to change your angle right and then if you this is how you create spin basically if you do this and then hold your bat flat the spin just goes in the direction that you want it to. So you're spinning like this, spin goes up, it comes down on a, on a rubber surface, so you can see it like a bouncy ball. If you spin a bouncy ball very hard, touches the ground, it will spin in the direction that you're spinning, right? So that's basically this. This is how side spin works, or top spin in general. So how do you counter it? Countering in this case would mean that you're able to make this go back up in a straight line. So as you can see, it's basically the reverse angle of how you hit it. You hit it like this, reverse angle goes almost straight back, right? So this is a good way to get a feeling for spin and side spin. If you notice that when you're doing it, the ball is dropping to the side, that's probably because you're still scared to really brush the ball, right? So I would advise this to anybody that wants to learn how to spin and also anyone who wants to learn how to uh, return server or anything uh, that has to do with side spin or top spin in the end all of the different types of spins are the same the only difference is how your body is behind the ball right behind the type of incoming spin to start off i'm going to explain you how to go into the spin to try and control it now this is not the easiest solution for it but it is very similar to this so it's easy to understand right but you need to be able to read the spin well to really go well into the spin there's ways to um, make sure that you don't depend too much on your opponent's spin by playing it a little bit heavier, for example. But basically, you have to read it quite well to be able to perform this well. But it's a good way to get a feeling for spin and for the ball. So that's the first example that I will give. So serve like this. When it comes in, you go into the spin. I'm going to try to do this with uh, one of the serves from Solid Slime. So in this case, the ball is coming in like this, right? So he's playing the ball on this side. Like the ball is here and he's brushing it like this. That's what's creating the curve. So if I want to do what I was saying before, I have to go against uh, the spin, right? Which is like this. So this is almost pure side spin. And I can make it go almost straight back to where it came from. Okay, still, like I said, I have to really read the spin well. And there's some random, set random settings on this serve. But basically that's it. So I'm, go I'm going into into the spin to make it return over the same arc that it was following. So it comes in with this arc, it goes back with the same arc. And because you're following into the curve and you're going against it, the margin of error is sometimes a little bit smaller because the ball is actually trying to pass your battle by. You're not going straight in, straight at it. You're going actually in the, you're trying to touch it on one of the thinnest lines. But this allows you to use your opponent's incoming spin like I'm not doing a lot but there's a lot of curve on it that's because it's the spin that's coming in that's being returned next option well we, we've talked about it before it's kind of the fade right so what the fade does is it 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 goes with instead of going into the spin it goes a little bit with the spin right so that way it cancels it out a little bit as well instead of going against it you go a little bit with it and instead of so what this does is it comes in with a curve, with spin, 
and you return the spin, right? Like this. But when you go with the spin, the, the ball goes straight. So what you're doing is you're kind of canceling out whatever was on the ball and making it into a more straight shot. So this can be useful. Like it's, it's a bit dangerous because it's, it can be a very easy ball because there's not much side spin on it. But it's very nice, like we said before, to, to try to surprise your opponent and go to the other side. And this comes together with uh, the next point. It depends less on touch and more on just this is how you get the ball back on the table. So when they see uh, side spin coming in like this, like this one now, it means that when you put the, uh, your pedal against it, it's going to go to the to the right, right? So what they say is, if it's going to go to the right when you hit it straight, aim for the left, right? But, and then it will go to the middle or it's very hard for me to do because I am, I am reading the spin. I don't, I don't advise the, the, I just aim for the left side uh, part if, and, and let the side spin do its thing because it, it kind of insinuates that you don't control the side spin or you don't try to control it. So it's a good option when you have a good feeling for it after training to go into the spin, fade and go with the spin. And then when you get that under control and you have something coming in, uh, you can surprise them by, instead of, you know, just playing it and hoping that it will land somewhere on the table because you're aiming for the left and it will go to the right, you can try to use the spin that's on it um, to help you get the ball where you want it to go, right? But it's very risky. So once you have good control over uh, returning in general, this might be something that you can do, just using the side spin of your opponent. It's better to understand what is happening and use the spin that's coming in. Another thing that can help you a lot is the position on the, on the bat. Um, in real life, it's much more important, but in here it's there a little bit as well because of centrifugal force, right? So if you play the ball on the outside, it's gonna catch a lot more spin but you're also going to be affected a lot more by the spin and the ball is also gonna bounce. It's gonna go out quicker as well. So if you're not sure, you can try to play as close to your fingers as possible because that's where like kind of the dead point is. So if you wanna leave the ball very short or dead, um, you probably wanna go somewhere more there. You can kind of um, make your opponent think like you're doing more as well because they will expect it to go wide, to go to go long when you hit it here. But you do the same movement, but closer to your fingers, and it will go much slower, right? So, just to explain, here, there's much more interaction with your stroke. So if you want to produce a lot of effect, that's where you play, like the top third. It doesn't have to be on the tip, eh? it's like really here, right? It's the same for any type of spin, that's more or less your sweet spot, both forehand and backhand. If you want it to be more dead, you play around here, right? Your forehand around there. And the idea is not to just hold it there, you know, which you can do of course as well. But the idea is to do like a full stroke, like you would do if you hit it on another spot, but the result is different. So that would surprise your opponent a bit more. Everything in table tennis is about variation. So the place you touch the ball can be something that you vary as well. Also, this might help you realize what's going on because maybe in general, you're trying to spin a lot or you produce a lot of spin, but you're actually hitting the ball too close to your fingers. Try to hit it a little bit further away to produce uh, more top spin. Or if you notice that you, it's very hard for you to control serves coming in, they're going out too fast, then maybe try to hit it a little bit more towards your fingers have a little bit more space to work with. I know in the game right now, the bounce when you uh, push is a little bit heavy sometimes, right? So this can help because it doesn't reduce the bounce, but it reduces the movement of your pedal playing closer to your fingers. So just backspin, yeah. I mean, with just backspin, you can add your own side spin to control it a little bit more because if you go straight against it, you can sometimes sit up a little bit or it's a little bit less aggressive, right? You can you can try to go aggressive, but then it's, it's easier to lose control. So 
a little bit more side spin gives you more margin because you can use power to the sides instead of straight against the spin. It's the same concept. If you go into the spin, you have to have more feeling and you're dependent on the spin that's coming. And if you, if you avoid the axis of spin, you can add your own spin. This basically is like the first video. But it's the same concept. Like in this case, I'm brushing on top of the ball a little bit. It's going against the spin and returning the ball over the same trajectory that it came in. That's the idea, right? And then you can add your own stuff to the side, like we saw in the video. Going against the spin allows you also to build up the spin, right? So he gives you spin, you take it, add a bit on top of it. Let's welcome Ayafatan. He's going to help us with a little demonstration of showing how side spin can help you make the point and can be hard to read when it's positioned well. There's uh, two examples of that. I held up two fingers, but nobody sees that, of course. If I do it from here, for me, um, it's a pendulum serve. And it comes in from the right to the left. And it's it goes out deep forehand, but it moves very close to his, to his body. Because of that, he, he doesn't have that much space to really brush the ball and cancel out the side spin. So he, if, he, if he plays it like it would be just backspin, um, it's very likely that he will play into the net. But it needs to be fast enough, otherwise he has time to move and just play it. Let's see if, uh, if I can handle it, and I think he can. But let's see. Of course, I, exp I explained it just now, so <laughs> he'll be ready. He's already all the way there. All the way there. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, he can deal with it. <laughs> I'm going to try to put it a bit more. That's it. That's it. So his body was there. He got out of the way, but it's much harder to get a lot of uh, enough purchase on the ball to lift it over the net. The second one I want to show is when he serves. So I'm going to try to put it at his elbow. And with a side effect, it's going to have the same effect. Like if he doesn't get there with enough space, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be a little bit harder than normal and he's probably going to go into the net. But just for the sake of showing it, he's too good. That's it. If it would be just backspin, first of all, because of the side spin, it would sit up higher. Right, because I'm not going against the spin, and it's easier for him to finish probably forehand because it would go more to the left. But now, because I'm going into the side spin, I can keep it low and I can put it in a place where he's not comfortable. But you saw like a good player will create the space and still be able to attack. But I noticed in this game, a lot of people have trouble with exactly that. Like when I return fast the side spin to their elbow for the back end, and with the serve, it goes fast on their body. Um, for this particular reason, and most of them don't seem to realize what is going on. So I just wanted to show you guys that. Yeah, when when I get um, side spin serves, I try to. Um, I'm not the fastest, so uh, I try to lean to the side and yeah, get me some space to lift the ball a little bit up. I don't play really uh, fast shots, so my game style, everyone knows, is uh, placement. So I try to place it left and right so the opponent can't attack right after my return yeah so uh, i think that's something that can help a lot of people so the the basis of that is that he doesn't rush the first ball so if you're ready to really just attack the service or you see me preparing like this and you're expecting it to go to your deep forehand because i play there a lot and you're just prepared to attack you might not get in time to this place, and for sure not if, if I play more towards the back end, right? So it's about being in a relaxed state and and uh, taking it a little bit calmer, the first one. It doesn't mean that you don't have to attack when the ball comes long, but you don't have to finish it. Just try to add good brush to the ball to get uh, to get the initiative in the point. I think that's uh, key there. All yeah. right. Thanks a lot, Eiffeton, and uh, hope to do this maybe more often. Thank you for having me here. <laughs> happy, happy to have you here. As luck would have it, last week Timo Ball showed us a very good example of going with a spin. So I will put a link in the description and uh, try to link it uh, right here. So 
feel free to take a look at that if you want to take it one step further.